Greetings from Indian Medical Association and along with that we also Heart Care Foundation of India, EMED News and EMED Nexus also joins you. Today's webcast will be a special webcast which will have most of the IMA leaders who will be interacting with our Attorney General Mr. Mukul Rodhgi who will be joining us in another 25 minutes because he is still in the court and from the court he will be directly be coming with us. Dr. Naresh Trihan, Chairman Vedanta will also be joining us and you can see both the seats are for them. On my left is my National President Dr. A. Markhanda Pillai, a Padma Shri awardee and uh, who is going to lead the discussion with uh, Mukul Rodhgi. On my right, I have with me uh, my past president, uh, Indian Medical Association, Dr. Vinay Agarwal, who is also the past president of Simao. To his right is Dr. N. V. Kamath, who is a uh, former director of health services, government of Delhi, and now he is the principal advisor to Indian Medical Association. On my left is Dr. Tandon, who is the finance secretary of National IMA, and to his left is Dr. V.K. Monga, who is uh, incoming dean of IMA CGP. So, welcome to our show today. Our show today is basically to interact with the attorney general regarding various issues faced by the medical profession. Because he will be joining in another 25 minutes, we will take these 25 minutes to discuss and have the views of our national president. All of you who are watching, this webcast is coming on emedinexus.com. You have been getting emedin news for the last five years. Now this emedin news has become more interactive from today. You will be able to post your questions directly. You will be able to, all your questions will come to us. If you post on the, the if you have registered, uh, once you have registered, you might have received a password. You go, you take that password and once you are registered, you will be able to watch the webcast and also post your questions. These questions will come to us and accordingly, whosoever the question is asked for, will be able to answer those questions. This webcast will continue for uh, two hours till five o'clock. So there is enough time, don't get upset if your questions are not being answered in time. Go on putting down your questions and your questions will come. So let's have the first of all, a message from our national president, Dr. Matande Pillai. On behalf of the Indian Medical Association, I welcome you all for this uh, webcast. Today we are discussing the burning issues of the medical profession, issues that are hampering public health, and issues if it is addressed properly, the cost of healthcare can be brought down. Now, there are a lot of problems, a lot of issues, which have been there, which have been more or less unaddressed or partially addressed. And uh, these issues, team I have this year, has taken it up very seriously, given it a lot of priorities. Solutions for these issues definitely is not going to come within a year. Or more, but only if we keep it sharp and uh, fight for our rights and privileges, which on the long run is going to be uh, better for the public. Uh, to enumerate a few of the issues, uh, one is of course the Clinical Establishment Act. The Act has been formed to the purpose of standardization of uh, treatments in our country. But then, the way it is being handled is definitely not going to address the problem or solve the problem. Because there are many clauses in this act which could be very counterproductive. For example, a lot of emphasis is being given for infrastructure. Even for a clinic, how much space has to be there, what, how many staffs have to be employed, and things like that. Here a family doctor or a one-man clinic doctor, he is a doctor, he is a nurse, he is a compounder, and that's how 
he is making healthcare cheaper to the people. Now this act says that to have a clinic, uh, this much of square feet area has to be there. There has to be reception and uh, air conditioned rooms and things like that, which are all essentially necessary because we already know that at least uh, many of the di districts in our country, uh, they never see a doctor when they are born because they are not born in a hospital and when they are sick, they don't get the help of a doctor and even when they die because of illness, they don't get the help of a doctor. So in that scenario, putting more emphasis on infrastructure will be really counterproductive. The objective of the uh, act should be such that uh, more emphasis is given for treatment part, qualification of the doctor. Uh, IMA says that the minimum qualification to practice modern medicine has to be MBBS. So dilutions on those areas are not necessary. And uh, that is what IMA is trying to stress. Also there is another clause in the act which says that a patient, if it comes to any doctor or any clinic, he has to be stabilized. The word stabilization itself is a vague one because there are uh, circumstances where when you try to stabilize a patient without offering its uh, definitive treatment, we may lose the patient. So in every patient, more than stabilization, sometimes it may be definitive treatment that will be required. For example, a person with a myocardial infarction, uh, what he needs is uh, thrombolysis. So in a peripheral center, if he tries to bring up the blood pressure by supportive treatment, then he is losing the opportunity to treat the patient and you may even lose the patient. Again, an ectopic pregnancy and rupture, which is also very common. And uh, if you try to stabilize a patient by trying to bring up the blood pressure, the bleeding will continue and you are never going to bring up the blood pressure before you transfer and you will lose the patient. In such instances, what is required is first aid and at the earliest transfer the patient to a center where facilities are there to do a surgery. So such process is definitely is going to be counterproductive. Another thing is that uh, as such the doctor population ratio in our country should be ideally one per uh, uh, 600. We have one per 1500. So we need more doctors. Meanwhile, we cannot stress on the number of doctors and things like that. In the case of specialists, we are still far, far below. Because at least 40% of the graduates who are coming out, uh, only they hope for specialization, we will be able to have enough number of specialists. So if the act is saying that if such and such number of specialists are there, then we can have a specialized cleaning, then again it is going to be counterproductive. So these are the issues where a lot of input in the medical association could have given uh, so that we have an act which is much more oriented to a standardization of treatment. Here again, when you say standardization, uh, in a country like ours where we have uh, geographical, social and economic inequalities and even availability of doctors and facilities in certain areas, uh, the uniform standard is not something which is achievable. And uh, the uniform standard obviously is not necessary also because we have the national board for accreditation of hospitals where there is no uniform standard. You say you have a hospital and what sort of care you are going to do. And according to that, uh, the accreditation or standardization is tailor-made to suit your objectives. So that is what is required. But in people are certain that such a provision is not there. What they are saying is every hospital is anywhere in our country has to have a uniform structure. So that such things, IMA feels that 
are going to be counterproductive. And this will in turn result in closing of hospitals, which are small and medium. And this will definitely tell upon the health of the public. The recent survey that has been conducted uh, which shows that 40% of healthcare is being delivered by medium and small hospitals. And this is the backbone of healthcare in our country, more than even the primary health center, where only 15% of our population go for seeking help. So, this is the segment which has been supported. I am mean, pleased that if, you, if education is a uh, fundamental right of a citizen, and if government can have aid at schools, why can't government also have aid at hospitals, particularly the small and medium level hospitals? The financial support to this hospital, if it is given, they themselves can deliver health care much better. Another uh, uh, efficiency of this act is that there is no uh, promotional clause in this act. If, whenever you bring an act, uh, if you mean to increase the standards to a particular level, then definitely it has to be supported by a program. So, promoting clause has to be there. It is not obviously there in this act. That again is a major efficiency that we find. And that's why we are saying that we should have aid of hospitals. These hospitals in turn can offer to treat at least 18 to 20 percent of very poor patients even free of cost. So such changes, amendments are essential in this act. And unless these are made, uh, this act is going to be counterproductive. The very segment of healthcare institutions that is small and medium level hospitals, which are the backbone of healthcare in our country, this segment is going to be closed out and this will be uh, very much against sustaining our population. So, uh, we also welcome Dr. Naresh Prihan, uh, the Chairman and Managing Director of Vedanta Group of Hospitals. So, welcome uh, Dr. Naresh. Uh, Mukul should be uh, here from the court at 3.30. That was his time. He'll be here for one and a half hour. So, what we are basically uh, discussing is that medical profession today is concerned. A, Dr. Matanda Pillai has said about the Clinical Establishment Act, that if the Clinical Establishment Act comes and every single clinic and the smaller establishments, if they have to behave like a corporate office, then the management, the treatment has to go up, the cost has to go up. They cannot provide a, a corporate uh, clinic services as 50 rupees or 100 rupees, which a GP is providing today. Otherwise, the cost of the treatment will go up. Second is in PCP Entity Act, uh, you are running a cardiology hospital. How do you feel that PCP and DJ department coming and checking whether you are doing a sex determination to a cardiologist who is doing a echocardiography, who has nothing to do with somebody who is doing a fetal echo, I can understand. But somebody who is only doing an adult cardiac work or a non pelvic ultrasound work, why should PCP and DT act comes? And then if you have not filled a form, you are jailed. That means if, you have, if, you are, if your forms are incomplete, which is ridiculous. I mean, there is no way doctors can be held criminally liable for clerical mistakes. That's not the job of the doctor. That's the second thing which we are facing. The third is the judgment given by the Supreme Court clearly says that the compensation awarded to a patient will be according to the money being uh, earned by that person at that particular moment. That means that means the Supreme Court judgment is now forcing me to charge less from the poor and charge more from the rich. That means my fee should also vary accordingly with that. That's third is our concern. Fourth is Schedule H, H1X drugs, which are called poisonous drugs. If they are being written by non-MBBS doctors, this will be absolutely injurious to the health of the people. This will be. So, so let's... Here, a couple of views let, let me answer your last question first. Yes. There is no question about allowing non But that's not between you and me. The, the Maharashtra government has allowed it. No, UP government has allowed it. They have, they have found a UP notification has come last week and they have given a list of 40 drugs and they have said all doctors, irrespective of whether they are MBBS or not, they can prescribe and divide it. They can prescribe all Schedule H and H1 drugs. You know, what the government does or what the regulator does does not necessarily mean that it's the right thing to do.
So what we are discussing here is that we are actually giving inputs into a thought process which, which may have emanated as a knee-jerk response to a problem. So when you talk about PNDT Act, you are saying that yes, is there abuse of it? Of course there is abuse of it. There is abuse of people or even people in the garb of doing other echoes, giving gender uh, uh, sort of diagnostics. So the point really is one, the law that is made has created a lot of problems as collateral damage. So I think that what what really we need to do is to, because we are the people on the ground who are experiencing the collateral damage, is to keep that dialogue open with the regulator to say, look, and that's what the inputs we are giving right now, is to say, look, where is it in that narrow band that you want to check that people not abusing? Your regulatory and your enforcement should be much more strict, but at the same time it should not paint everybody with the same brush because then your, your uh, ability to monitor the area that you are able to monitor with the assigned number of staff and resources becomes diluted. You are spending your, your uh, resources in areas where you don't need to monitor. But the areas that need to be monitored then will escape. So I think that this needs to be redirected. So I am absolutely in favor of regulating the uh, sex determination ultrasonography most definitely, but where it is obvious that there is no room for abuse, those are the places which should be excluded from this, this kind of draconian measures to take because it wastes time, it increases cost and it dilutes your ability to, to monitor. That's the most important part. So if all your resources went to where the crime is being committed, I think it will be much better. I'll give you an example. Now, now my president is a neurologist. Suppose he keeps a machine for a transcranial Doppler and in that machine there is no probe to do abdominal or a cardiac work but still every month he has to send a report that I have not done any sex determination. Every month he has to put down a board outside this clinic writing that we are not doing any sex determination. Somewhere or the other we have been writing to the government, we have been writing to the government, we have been putting these pressures to the government that this is wrong. I think this type of a thing has gone to Kerala High Court, to Maharashtra High Court, to Punjab High Court, to Delhi High Court, and but nobody is listening. The decisions are not coming. So the decisions are that even if you are doing a vascular probe, some those vascular surgeons who says in our machine there is no non-vascular probe, even then they come into PCP. Look, what is what is the you know, what, what I have to say is see, ultrasound is a investigation too, not only diagnosis, even uh, therapeutic area also. The air of ultrasound is being used. It is uh, a very cheap, most commonly used, in very user friendly, right from an MBBS doctor with some training to a super specialist they can do. It is not only used for uh, uh, sex determination, right from the emergency room itself, you are doing fast to find out if there is a trauma, to find out whether it's a liver injury or uh, uh, pneumothorax or pneumothorax. So such a commonly used tool, diagnostic tool, which is uh, definitely has changed in the healthcare scenario in our country. If the government, just for one issue alone, is putting a regulation, and then it is going to be counterproductive. This is exactly what I am telling. See, uh, just to address an issue, it is putting a regulation which is going to be much more counterproductive than useful. Not only that, uh, in spite of this uh, PC Made the Act which has come into existence for the last 15 years or so, the sex ratio has not changed at all. And it still remains the same way, particularly in uh, certain vulnerable states. It remains the same. So, uh, what is the point in uh, a, a sort of regulating a tool which is uh, most convenient, most cheap, most user friendly and most beneficial to the health of the public? One more thing, let me see. Yeah. Another issue is see, uh, female feticide is a social issue. Why father is female feticide? Because of social reasons. 
So unless you address the social issue, find a solution. Whatever regulation you are going to, for a social issue, we are giving a medical solution. And uh, harassing doctors. That is exactly what is happening. You are, you are not address the social issue. What is, how you address the social issue? Empowerment of women. Financial support to the women. And uh, financial help for education of female child. Financial help for marriage of girls. And this is what government should exactly do. No, no, see. This is it's something which is out of the ambit of IMA or UN. Of course. Okay, of course. But and we have a response. Everybody knows. Let, 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 let me let me let me also finish, Dr. Yeah. Pillay. Yeah. I have also yeah. a point of view. Yeah. There is a question that was asked to me. Let yeah. me answer it. Yeah. Okay, we are getting we should not get distracted by outside or peripheral issues because then it takes away the credibility of this discussion. The point really over here is that you, there is a crime being committed. If we as doctors, as IMA, as MCI, whatever body we want to be, today we have to self-regulate ourselves. The main accusation against us today is that we are not self-regulating. There are enough doctors who have crossed the line that we have to be ashamed of that. And now we have a two-pronged attack on this. One is the fact that like the income tax department has said, if you fill in your form and declare your own tax, if in the audit we find you, you are you are misrepresented, you shall be penalized. We can use the same thing for ourselves. And we say, every person who has an ultrasound machine out of the ambit of doing a, a pelvic ultrasound or for gynecological or obstetric purposes can give a self a self declaration that we do not have the probes, we do not use this machine and we, don't, we, are, we are responsible for any aberration that may be found. If as an institution or an individual, if you can give that in writing, then you say, okay, those people who have given this undertaking can be audited randomly, like you do in income tax. So, so you, everybody knows that they are open to, open to uh, a audit, but they must live by the right rules and it should be, that's when it should be draconian that if you are lying and you are caught lying then you are in trouble. On the other hand, when you are when you are looking at that subset of people who are using these equipment for purposes which are, we are worried about, then they should be audited more frequently and said that this is what is supposed to be. So I think what we have to do today is to not criticize something but to come with Solutions. With solutions which are responsible, which we as organizations, we as doctors, we, we have 200,000 plus members and we say this is the charter that we are adopting for ourselves. We shall be the watchdogs of our own profession. What prevents responsible members of the society of doctors who, who are part of the society to say I will not only practice it myself but I will try to influence other people who are indulging in such practices from refraining from them. I'm just, I'm okay. So, so I think that that will be received much better by the government and the regulator rather than getting into okay. issues and, and showing their deficiency. If you try to say the government is, has not been able to do this, why, why are we, if they're doing it to us, they're not doing it to the other guy, but we are the victims. I'm sorry that if, if I was the administrator, I would say I'm not feeling sorry for any doctor. The doctors are doing very well. There is no reason. Now let us listen to reason. What are the doctors saying who are saying today that we want to participate in making the healthcare of this country a advanced healthcare delivery system we want to participate in? We, are, we will do the following responsibilities and we actually give the means for doing it. I think our voice is not heard today. KK, you were complaining, nobody is listening. Nobody is listening because our credibility is extremely low. So if we do not improve our credibility, we will always be complaining about the same thing. So that's what my, my view is on this. We, okay, let me just answer you that when you said that self-regulation, uh, this matter has gone into at least six or seven courts, high courts. And Kerala High Court has given a decision, which we have been sending it to all the courts, where they said, that all those who are not doing pelvic ultrasound can give an undertaking. Oh, so it's already they happened. should get their machine registered because their machine has a capability 
they should get a machine register. Then they give an undertaking that we are not doing present ultrasound. And we are amenable to random checkups. That decision is available. That court decision is available. That court decision has been sent to all PCP and DT departments, including Delhi. In Delhi department also I said, but they said this is not applicable to Delhi because this is a court decision of a particular South. It is not available. So in Delhi we met Ashok Walia at that time. We showed him the judgment. I see, he says, unofficially I can make it happen that we will be lenient to people who are not doing pelvic ultrasound if they are giving an undertaking. But we wanted it to be converted into a law. No, but, can it to no. Yeah, but does that mean that we cannot get an endorsement from the Delhi High Court? The issue is not as simple as, as I brought out by you. Because the act itself, there is a clause where if you are affecting a uh, female fetus by defining sex of the fetus, then of course I am also agree they have to be punished and there is no doubt. But then there is a clause A of it which says if you don't display the registration number, if you don't have a copy of the act on your table, if you fill in four or five pages of the report, the two uh, things are left behind. All this is attracting the same criminal law as is for uh, abetting female fetuses. That is what we are after. Not only that, the act is there, but there are uh, implementers who do more than what the act says. These are our problems. They are harassing the doctors. No, Haryana Act says that if you are not wearing an apron then while doing a pelvic ultrasound, you can be put into jail. Now they say that not one apron, if your name is not there, I know one person last month who came and harassed me in my echo lab in, in my hospital. He says, Doc, you are not wearing apron, there is no name plate. Are you aware that you can be put uh, behind the bar for this? He says, I am one of the activists of PCP NDT Act. I said, this is not a PCP NDT lab. He says, so what? He says, the board is lying outside. Your machine can do a sex determination. You are not wearing an apron and you are not wearing this. And he says, you can go into jail. And jail is, machine can be sealed, jail. These are, and this has happened. Many of our doctors have gone into... No, no, KK, uh, KK, there is no question. So what that, we are that, trying to... That, like, like I said, many things have been hijacked and then there will be extortion in addition to this, with this tool. Okay, we are, what am I saying? This is where the crux of my dialogue with you lies. Why are people not listening to us? We are the most responsible part of society. We, are, we deal with everybody. Everybody individually treats you with respect. You know your patients do. But collectively, we have lost the moral high ground. And I'm saying that instead of fighting from low moral right, let's try to rise to the high moral uh, ground to say, this is what we are doing. And my whole question is not what Dr. Saab is saying. He's saying it. everything is right. We are, we are in trouble. But the point is, how do you get out of this morass? That everybody thinks that they can accuse you, they, they, they think you have crossed the line, the doctors are not doing the right job, they are charging too much, they are doing unnecessary procedures, they are doing unnecessary investigations, where we very well know the majority of us are not anywhere near that state. But that means that we, for a minority, we are actually losing our identity and our integrity, integral part of our, our being. So I am saying we need to fight that. That's the we need to fight that where every decision that is taken is done in consultation with us. That's the ground we should have. Now what we have no. done is, on yeah. the 16th of this month, we wanted to show that medical union, medical profession is united. So we wrote to all our 1700 branches, we wrote to all our 30 state branches and we said what are your 5 or 6 points, 7 points, so we came back with 5 or 6 points and we said we only want to deal with those points which are helpful to public. We don't want to increase our salaries, reduce our duty hours, no. so we have not taken a single demand which is for doctor. So we have only identified 5 or 6 or 7 points not following them is injurious to the health of the public. Say for example, capping. Capping of, uh, if you are going to, if you are going to ask me to charge more from the rich and less from the poor, 
I don't think so it is justified, but that's not what OTH have taken in the Council of India. So what is the capping? Uh, the, the new capping law is... No, 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 let us finish with this thing. You see, here, uh, whatever may be the standing, the medical profession in India, if you compare with any other country, our service is more than what anybody else is doing. Because in other countries, as a specialist or a journalist, you work for eight hours. In one day, you see, say, 20 patients or 24 patients. Here, we have doctors. 24 hours in the 365 days, they are working. And they are looking after, say, on a day, maybe uh, 200 patients. In a primary center, there are the primary centers where they are looking after even 1,000 patients. So that's sort of workload we are handling. And it is uh, definitely the cheapest healthcare delivery when you compare it with any any country, even if you uh, give allowance for uh, the value of rupee or whatever. So that being so, then uh, this uh, general sort of attitude of raising the medical profession, definitely we have some resentments. And uh, not only that, see, when we point out very relevant issues, say PCP and detect, we are not saying that any doctor who is uh, abetting female pedicide, he should be left alone. He has to be punished. IMA is for that. At the same time, these non-compliance, this is uh, anybody can understand, these non-compliance should not attract the same punishment. This is very logical. No, no, no. So agree on that. I'm uh, saying. The government has, don't have to think uh, too much. So even that clause itself is removed. Things are much better. And uh, who, is the, who, who is to repeal this law? What we are saying is, who is to repeal this law? We want all senior people and people. We all have to work together. Why I am raising this point with people like Dr. Hernandez? I spoke to two or three eminent so called uh, personalities, medical personalities. And I told them, you let's, let's go. He says, Prime Minister, whenever he has any difficulty, Prime Minister, President, Health Minister, he calls me for advice, I give them the advice. Why should I work for the medical profession jointly with the medical association? I'm not naming that person. He says, whenever the Health Minister needs me, he'll call me, I'll advise him, he will do it for the, for, the, for the profession. I said, there has to be one voice. We have to represent, all of us have to represent the collective consciousness of the medical profession, not individually. That's what is lacking. And that's what we are trying to interact with people like you and with Mukul, that we are now being forced to do a IMA Satyagraha Act 116. It is not a strike. We are one lakh doctors. We already have 50,000 doctors who have signed. One lakh doctors will be there on the road, going to the local administrator and give them a representation. I mean, I don't think, sir, this is the last thing that the medical profession should be able to do. So, excuse me, does the local administrator have the power to actually modify, repeal, or not enforce the PMDT Act. They can at least tell it, they can write to the government that this is wrong. Yes, it's boring. So, so what, I'm boring saying, what, what I'm saying is, look, if you look at structurally, and I'm, I'm ignorant about this, that's why I'm asking you this question, is that who today can modify the PMDT Act? Let's all take it for example. All, all these things are in the hand of, it has to move from the health ministry. Okay. Okay. So now you are saying, you saying that if you had a hundred thousand signatures from doctors giving a signing a petition which says the following, 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 and a few hundred or a few thousand people went to the health ministry and said, look, this is the representation. This is causing havoc in the lives of doctors and making it difficult for patients to be treated properly. This is our representation. Then it comes to the central issue here that it is you who has to move it to the uh, appropriate authority. So this this is an act of parliament, this, uh, right? So it is only the health, uh, the, uh, the empowered health committee or committee for health parliamentary or health parliamentary. Committee. They are the ones who have the power to then listen to us and then say yes, there are certain things that need to be modified. So I will give you an example. No, sir. Yeah. See. You are very right. This we have been doing for the last 15 years, right from the day the act has come. 
we have made the government, we have made the supervisory committee, we have made the parliamentary committee. Everybody says, you are right. There's a point in what you are saying. But the action should come. Action should come from the government. See, what this, do you mean, this is, uh, uh, nobody has to think loud or more. No, what do you mean action, action must come from the government? No, no, let it. me explain. You don't have to see this. Is, uh, anybody with uh, common sense can understand that non-compliance and crime cannot have same punishment. They so simple. This uh, government agrees. The parliamentary committee, we have it there also agrees. There is a supervisory body on this page in the act, which also agrees that you are right. But nothing more is happening. So they have, so not, they have, uh, they have said you are right, but they have not acted on it. They have not acted right. So, okay. So, in a democracy, so, so, so in a democracy, uh, uh, only those who try to get it. That's so simple. So, and if, if we are not, uh, if uh, three <coughs> organized persons or two organized persons are going and telling the government, if that language the government cannot understand, let uh, 2.5 large people say the same thing. And let the uh, government so What you are saying is that there is a consequence to inaction by the government. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That if you were to say that, look, this has happened, this has happened, and we, and we have already sensitized the current committee. If we have sensitized the current committee, then we say, look, this is what the 250,000 people will be on the street, it will be in the press, which is pressure, no question. But the important thing will be that if, as you are saying, it's Satyagraha, it should also be very focused on real issues and with real solutions. Because if there is just noise, it goes nowhere. There is noise on the streets every day, hundreds of times, as you can see what's going on. Yeah, right. now, now the awardees are The issue is, we need a central law. Uh, Central Act. There are 15 states who have an act against medical violence against doctors and medical institutions. We want a Central Act. I spoke to the Central uh, Health Committee. They said, you don't have a Central Act? You are not aware? 15 states have it. You give it to me, I'll make sure within one month it happens. Three letters have gone. Health Minister letter has gone. Everybody says, it has to come, it has to come, but nobody is working on it. We want a Central Act means that we want protection by network. Okay, therefore this, there are 17 ordinances in 17 states. That's one. Two. In so who's going who's to pass that? So you take one issue Parliament. by issue, right? You take too many issues, you will not Parliament. get anywhere. Parliament. Huh? Parliament. So that's what I'm saying. Parliament is not functioning. So yes. you, your, and, and your bill will go probably 2,000. I know, but then at least they should create the bill. Huh? Whether it's exactly what I'm trying to say, that we should the person to move it will be our health minister, whoever it may be, and it's Mr. Nada right now. We have to maintain a sustained pressure on Mr. Nada that please, this is disrupting everything, and you please, please move this bill or do whatever is necessary. Now, have we met as IMA? Have we met as as a total body of doctors with Mr. Nada directly on this issue? We have. Huh? We have met the health secretary, the DGHS, the minister. You have met Nada. Yes. Mr. Nada, you have met. And what did he say? He says, give it to me. No, no, so this, yeah, this petition, no, no, this petition now, so if, you have, if you have a hundred thousand signatures. The, the issue is, attack on hospital doctors, by any standard, a civilized society should not tolerate. There is no doubt about it. Now, in Afghanistan, there was a bombing of a health facility. It is an international event. Even the World Medical Association came out with a resolution condemning it. But this is happening every, every day, just like a road traffic accident happening every minute in our country. This is happening at least every day in our country. How can one be insensitive to that? Because if it is happening in a uh, in an international scenario, the whole uh, world is objecting it, is condemning it. So when this is happening in our country at least every day, if not as taken as a road traffic accident, this is not just the doctor alone is beaten up. It is a hospital which is attacked. You know, in the hospital there will be a pregnant lady with a, a cardiac problem, post-operative patients. What will be the psychology of the patient who is uh, and in the hospital, it is being attacked. No, you are giving that too. Very, very crudely and brutally and violent. So, if this cannot uh, uh, sensitize 
the mind of politicians. How can uh, uh, sort of solve Just a simple announcement that uh, got a call from the attorney general. He will be here sharp at 4 because he left the uh, Supreme Court at 3.30 and he was supposed to be here at 3.30. So therefore, please stay on with us. Our discussion will continue in any way. Our discussion is till 5 o'clock. In the last one hour segment, we will have the attorney general with us. Please tell it's only interact, I did not take, <laughs> take you to the court, but uh, it's only uh, interact that we are, what, what we are No, what we are looking for is the right mode of action in the right forum yeah. to get some and not get frustrated with the idea that whatever genuine problems we have are not being heard. What you, what, this is what we are actually all saying. And what mechanism do we develop to be able to get that relief from, from uh, for our genuine problems which come in the way of serving the people. So ultimately, ultimately whatever defensive action we will take will affect the public. So if, if doctors are afraid to handle emergencies which may be cause, you know, leading or almost dead person comes in and they say we don't want to touch it, you take it somewhere else, then that's actually a, a contra, contrary to what we are supposed to do to help the public. But these things may scare us. So the point basically is that if we as a collective body do two things, and I think that's my, and I may be wrong, but, but this is my feeling, that collectively we must also do things which will demonstrate to the public and the, and the authorities that we are not selfish in our own selves, that in addition to, because we are giving a service and we are getting paid for it. So it's not like pure altruistic that you are doing free service and that you are suffering. But you are, you are actually being paid for the service. But you also know that there are many, many people who are suffering without the ability to access health care. What are we doing for them in whatever way? If we demonstrate that, it will put double pressure because the public will then feel that the profession is actually not only taking care of the rich or the people who can afford, but are also contributing their little bit, whatever bit there is, in the uplift of society or marginal, marginalized society, I think that will give us credibility. That is on one side which is not related to our genuine demand, but it will give us actually that credibility which we need to get. This is my feeling. The second thing is, that I think you don't, don't get distracted by too many issues. Pick up one or two that we have discussed just now, like violence against doctors and hospitals, and PMDT Act, which are two very uh, uh, sort of top of the... We have basically identified five issues, okay? five major and five minor, it's like a close schedule there. Our five major issues are, first is the capping of compensation. I'll explain to you what capping of compensation is. That today, one judgment has come by the Supreme Court. He says calculation of a compensation will be decided by 70 minus your present age at the time of death or at the time of disability, multiplied by your yearly income, plus 30 percent for your, uh, you're going to get your increments, minus 30 percent, um, uh, minus one third as your personal expenses. For a person who is having an income of two lakhs, this will come out to be around six crores. Another person, for the same level of deficiency, if he is earning only 6,000 rupees a month, his compensation may be only six lakhs. That means today, if I have in the hospital only one ventilator and two patients in the casualty to choose, normally I would have chosen whosoever comes first. The second one I will refuse. But now, I am not going to pick up the poor person. Because the richer one, I am liable for much more level of so I, I, I don't think, think this kind of argument works. A, a, and that's what we should refrain from. Whether yes or no. Whether yes or no. No, excuse me. Okay. You you know, know. Just one second. You know, this is one of the one of the arguments which we should we should fight against. A hospital says I didn't have a have a ventilator. It's absolutely legitimate because you can't have so many, or maybe you can't afford. Them. You can always intubate a patient. You can number bag them, put them in an ambulance along with your doctor, and send them to a place where there is a ventilator. Okay, there are many deficiencies. I'll tell you, for 20 years in Tel Aviv, they have a IT system where every hospital says, I have so many ICU beds available, I have so many other beds available, I have so many 
uh, and you know the gradation. I'm giving so you a different example. And yeah. the government can do that. I said, I said forget about this as an example. Today, government has done a capping for sterilization. That if there is a sterilization death, which is a government family planning program, the maximum compensation is 2 lakhs. Why? Why for a government, for their own setup, they have put a cap? Why can't they put a cap in compensation for any medical negligence? That will be anything. That will be 10 crores. But there has to be a cap. Excuse me, you know, this is what I'm trying to say. For a sterilization that, that, failure. That, that for a sterilization failure. 30,000 rupees is the cap. Yeah, it's a very complex subject. We should deal with it separately. The moment you bundle all this, no, but we want there, there our issue is very clear. We want capital. I mean, there we don't so want to compromise. Okay, so what do you want? You want why? Yeah, you want what about five, 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 five issues? Five issues. It has to be addressed. It has to be addressed. We, uh, we have to feel that government is serious on the issue, and government is going to take action. And there, some of them we very well know it needs time because so legislation and amendments will do take time. But then. I think the willingness of the government uh, to address these issues, that is at least we need. Even the camping, when you see, we are not against. Camping is a judicial problem or is it a government problem? It's a judicial uh, it, 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 act has to be amended. All of them require amendments. Judiciary can be done overnight. Yeah. Judiciary can do only what is mentioned in the act, not more or less. See, uh, so this guideline has been established that you multiply with so yes, many multiply years. Yes, multiply method is now applicable. This has been finalized. All the judgments today are, see, how can I differentiate the level of compensation between the poor and the rich when the level of service and the money charged by me is the same? When the money charged by me, by me is different, I can understand. So, you know, first of all, we are not in the business of doing negligence. We are in the business See, of saying, that, so, so the we are not that, It's not a question of negligence. Deficiency, the very fact government is allowing me to for an indemnity insurance, to error is my right. If to error is human. Fine. Error will occur. Okay. For error, but you error, cannot, it you cannot, cannot happen that a whole life my you can't calculate. goes away with one composition. You, you can't calculate. You can't calculate. You, you can't calculate error. The point basically is that either you say that given the state of the Indian economy and the earnings of the average doctor, this method of calculation may, may wipe the doctors that's out. That's okay, so that is another argument. Poor and, and rich doesn't come we, into this. We are not talking about no, no, this. This only uh, sort of example. The so, rich and we get the day. So this is this not the uh, point. Okay, okay, it's not the point on which we are uh, we are fighting. Uh, so I started to say <coughs> we agree that givers have to be reimbursed. And consumer act or whatever can be utilized. But our problem is normally natural justice means you do a mistake or an alleged mistake is there. You can be tried only in, a, in one court of law. Here there is a negligence uh, or alleged negligence. The, they can take the doctor to a consumer court, they can take the doctor to a civil court, they can take the doctor to a criminal court, they can take the doctor to medical council, so and can. they can take it to human rights, they can uh, take it to uh, human side. So, 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 so like that, there are multiple avenues, and simultaneously in all the, all the forums, for an alleged negligence, it is fine. But this never happens anywhere in the country. Or anywhere no, in the world. no, 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 just one second. Just, laws are applicable on me. Just, just, just one second. How does it happen that people in other countries deal with legislation? They will go to their representative. Our representatives, how many doctors are there in the parliament? There are about, I think, 23. More than 25. Huh? 23, okay. 23. So, it is the 23 power of those 23, 25, if they still believe that they have, they have a medical sort of uh, allegiance or, or part of it, so that they understand it. They are the ones who can understand these problems better than anybody else. Yes. But what happens is, so, Naresh, let me introduce, what happens is, that one of them, who is an active IMU member, is a minister, and he has created a board, okay? And in, in that board, he has one Ayurvedic member, one Ayurvedic one, one Yunani member, one Homeopathy member, one Ayurvedic member, one Naturopath member, and he has forgotten the Ayurvedic member at all. Board? Which board for what? I don't want to name. I don't want to name. And one 
not they think. There is a board he has created. No board to do what? Board to do something related to medical profession. And in that profession, so he has alternative board. medicine board. Yes. No, not, not alternative medicine. medicine. <laughs> not this alternative. is for you, medicine. <laughs> Not alternative medicine. This is Ayush board. I, I, it's not Ayush board. It's not Ayush board. I'm not naming it because he, he probably has done it by mistake. But he has forgotten his own profession, included as an association, medical professional. No, but only two things. Yes, either he forgot or he doesn't believe. No, in that, that must be generalized. What medical? Yeah, that will be one mistake on one part. No, no. But what I'm saying is, that if you have, then the best thing to do is to lobby. People who understand, who are part of the parliament, and say none of them is on the none of them is on the parliamentary committee for health. Yeah, there are. How many doctors? Thirteen of them. Many of thirteen doctors are in the parliament. Huh? Thirteen doctors. Out of the twenty-seven or twenty-eight. Now, what I am only trying to say is, you have to follow the right route, na? I am telling you, we have tried every route. We have tried every route. Every route. Parliamentary committee. But we have made many. No, but no, that. I don't have to go to every place, just go back to that again and again. Exactly the situation where we are in. All these problems, I am sure you also agree, are to be addressed. Of course, yeah. Even compensation. See, government, if a plane crash is there, of course, very rich people and others also come. Irrespective of their income, uh, what is the compensation, maximum compensation they give, maybe 2 lakhs or maybe 3 lakhs. That's all. There is a disaster, fire or whatever. What is the compensation the government do? One lakh or two lakhs. Industrial accident. What is the compensation they do? So when it comes to a negligence, no, in, uh, no, let me complete. In a medical practice, which is not, which is happened in our building. And in spite of whatever you, you, you may not even be able to save a fish. In that case, you are applying the multiple player system and things like that, which is not applied in any other country, country or any other situation. Yeah, please. And, one, uh, one less, less. and already the number of doctors available on this. And how we are giving uh, healthcare, it is only the boldness and awareness and the initiative of the doctor. Irrespective of a non availability of facilities, equipment, and uh, support. No, no, that we are doing. No question about that. You yeah. but so, when we do such a service, and if a mission happens, you are not going to pay 10 crores, 7 crores. No, no, but I, uh, unless I negligence is proved, you are not giving. But you are saying that the law of yeah, negligence should be strong. A doctor, even a specialist, if he is practicing ethically, I am sure he is not going to save in his lifetime this amount to pay compensation, even for one case. So this is uh, what is happening in America, where after 45 years, they stop medical practice and, uh, and they you. do something else. I shall tell you. And that situation we cannot afford in India, because they have more doctors. Even if you don't practice, there is enough uh, manpower to handle it. Here, yeah. We have, we are very much uh, in terms of doctors and uh, paramedics and if doctors also here also decide that enough is enough and we let us do something so, else. So, so okay. if, if those hundred thousand dollars, yeah. we all have thousands of patients, if the patients also sign the petition. We are trying to. We are telling you, you, tell tell you have a problem tell laid out that this is, the, this is the problem which is we are facing. And we want it to be yeah, absolutely. And we are absolutely with you. to be able to serve you better. That's what you should. Every doctor should have that petition signed and, and given. And if you have that is our phase two. In yeah. phase one, we are having hundred thousand doctors signing a petition. We are not doing a strike. No, it's it not a question of that. Listen to me. You are saying we are. I said, I said we are basically. We have written a letter to Prime Minister. Last letter yesterday. It has been received by the Prime Minister office with a copy to. Consumer Affairs Ministry, Health Ministry, Law Ministry, all those letters have gone yesterday. And we have given them that we still have 14 days left. And we sit, let's, let's sit and, and see. These are genuine demands. And none of our demands are pro doctor. They are all demands pro public. We will again writing a letter tomorrow that we are asking Nataji to give us time. And then we don't want a time of one, 10 minutes or 5 minutes. We have asked for 1 to 2 hours time the way we are discussing, so that we should be able to discuss all these five points with them. Now, if not, 
If not, then the, the next step for us left is that we have to give this representation a copy to the Prime Minister's copy, whatever copy we have submitted. We give it to the press in every city, local press, and we give it to the local administrator. Local administrator means uh, whosoever is GM, help is uh, district collector, to them we give them a representation. That you forward it to the Prime Minister. So at a national level when there is a movement, at least there will be a, a, a decisive dialogue. Dialogues are going on, but their priority on health is not there. The health priority is not there. That we are absolutely convinced. And we want, you are representing a segment of the society called medical celebrity. We want people like you to be... No, there is no such thing as medical celebrity. Okay. The basic thing is... I said people like you... Oh, and please, 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 what, what we are saying is, one, if we want our voice to be heard, which I have been saying again and again, that... And I'll, I'll say it openly because it's basically doctors listening to it. Absolutely. That our biggest enemy is ourselves. Okay, that's true. That's true. No doctor <coughs> can stand the success of the other doctor. Till we actually grow up ourselves and cohesively understand the problems that are facing and read the handwriting on the wall, because because of the weakness, inherent weaknesses, people can treat us the way they want to. That is why, that is why I think that bodies like uh, IMA can actually make a big difference. And I think that you, we need to address by priority, so one or two, three points, because you try to go with five, ten points, it gets diluted and nobody knows how to get their arms around it. And I think that we should all go, I'll, I'll be very happy to engage with the, with the parliamentary committee or the health minister and all that. But let it be crystallized in what, what, are we doing? what are we really looking for and the right solution for it. So you cannot say repeal the PNDT Act. No, it will be irresponsible. Amendment. Some amendments are required. Amend. These are the three, four amendments. Amendments and the PNDT yes. Act. Amendment. So we go, we go again and again. Right? So you have to, you are saying that unless, as doctors, which we are the citizens of a different uh, sort of ilk in the sense that we are declared service to, uh, to, to the public that we must behave a little differently than, you know, the unions. But in that, we should also feel that we do not have not lost the strength of the right voice. That's what you say. So if IMA and uh, the president and all these people have the, the, the uh, you know, mandate from ourselves to say, this is how we the pressure, I think it's the right way to do it. What you're planning and saying again and again to the government, please listen to these frustrating things that we are facing on a daily basis. You are listening it, to it from everybody else, but why are you not listening to the doctors with their genuine demands? Why are doctors being beaten up? Why are they being harassed by this an act which is which is not be, the mind has not been applied properly in its execution? Two, three other things that you may have, okay, but you will have to raise the voice. You cannot behave differently, but you still have to raise the voice. And quietness will not help. So, okay, it is the responsibility of the government. Because we are quiet enough, enough and enough and enough. To see that doctors who are, should spend their time treating patients in the hospital with the patient are not forced to go to the system. That's why right. that's a responsibility of the government. The government should see that our genuine grievances are addressed yes. for satisfaction. Everybody, we are everybody. So without that, uh, definitely, then we have nothing else to do. So we should. we see that there is no light at the end of the tunnel, then we are frustrated. No, and, but uh, uh, we, we have tried every other method. And uh, the last method, that uh, there is the only method if the government can understand and listen, then we have to do that. And so it, it is the responsibility of the government to see that we are not forced to do that. So, KK, you have that awardee committee. Have they been involved in this whole effort? They are not basically going to support. Oh.
welcome uh, so Mukul Rodgi, our Attorney General uh, of the country with us. And uh, just for the information, Mukul, this uh, is a live webcast in, uh, uh, organized by Indian Medical Association at MPNL Perfect Health Mela venue, which is being organized by Hartia Foundation of India, IMA, and emedinexus.com. And uh, the purpose uh, we have with us, uh, our national president, Dr. Pillai, we have interacted with both. Mm -hmm. We have Naresh with us. We have our finance secretary, Dr. Tandon. We have our dean elect, Dr. Monga. Dr. Kamath is a former uh, DHS. And Dr. Vinay Agarwal is a past uh, IMA president. Uh, the medical profession, we had interacted with you during our working committee. And after that working committee, we have written many letters to the health minister, uh, many aspects of that. But we have not been able to find some solution. We have four or five major issues, which I would just initiate, and then I would like my president to interact with you, and Naresh also to interact with you. One of our point is that we are facing a problem of physical violence against medical doctors. In every city, every week, as a secretary general, I get a video that a doctor is being beaten up, and then the medical establishment is being broken. And the answer there is that people have started equating that if I have spent one lakh, there should be a cure. If I have, my bill is two lakh, why did the patient die? So they want to equate it with the, the amount of money. So there are 15 states in the country where there is this uh, ordinance and there is a law of protection for medical profession during at work. And it is a three years imprisonment with fine. We have been asking for a central law. And there are 15 states where the law, why there is not a central law. I spoke to a couple of ministers, I spoke to a member of uh, health committee. They say, as you give it to us, we'll do it in next time. But nothing is moving. No, we have something is moving. One is a, a central law for protection against medical doctors. Second is, there is a uh, multiplier method being used for awarding compensation or not. And in multiplier method, depending upon the income of the person, uh, the claim will be high or low, which we feel is wrong, because that is forcing us to differentiate it between poor and rich. That's our opinion. The third is, the PCPMDT Act. For a clerical mistake, you can be jailed. If you are caught doing a sex determination, if you are jailed, we are happy. It's okay. Because so that's a crime somebody has done. But if you have not wearing an apron, if you are not wearing a nameplate, if you are not filling a form correctly, if you have left one column uh, in the PCB and the Act, which has nothing to do with sex determination, you can be directly, your machine can be sealed and you can be there. Fourth is, there is a Clinical Establishment Act which is coming, under which I am supposed to corporatize my clinic. I am supposed to stabilize every patient before I send, which is not possible. I am supposed to decide, my, my charges will be decided by the government, not by me. That means all the charges will be decided by the government, state government. I have to abide by the standard treatment guidelines given by the state. It is very clear cut law that if you are not following, that means government is going to decide how I am going to treat. They are not going to update my knowledge with that. So in a clinical establishment act, if that is practiced as it is, I don't think so it is practically feasible. And the fifth is, Government is trying to allow Ayurveda, homeopath, and naturopath to do MTPs and to give allopathic drugs. In allopathic drugs, schedule H, H1, X, and G. They are poisonous drugs. No law permits them to be used. But by bringing out ordinances, they are allowing Ayurvedic doctors to start practicing therapy. These are our five issues. One by one, we would like to discuss. The first is violence. And Request my national president to address it. <coughs> Thank you, sir. It's our privilege to have you again with us. And uh, when we started, this team started in walking right from the first Sunday working committee. You were there. You didn't give us a lot of feedback and input and advice. And uh, that helped us back off. And we have been interacting with the government on these four, five issues. But even today, we are aware we start. Nothing has changed. So we are really frustrated. The medical profession is frustrated because we feel that uh, uh, an atmosphere exists where a doctor cannot practice with dignity, peace, and 
if that does not change, then uh, definitely doctors will start doing uh, safe practice. The cost of treatment is going to go up. And uh, even those small things which a family doctor can do, he's not going to take it because of the fear of litigation and other acts which is on his head. So uh, and we have a responsibility as an organization to see that this comfort level is there for this doctors. Unfortunately, for this one year, we are going to end our term. And still, it is where we started. So that's how we are. No. Now, considering the problems that you are facing, yes, uh, if you feel that the government is not being attentive to your issues and uh, violence continues unabated, my suggestion is that your association or council should move to the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court cannot make a law. It cannot direct parliament to make a law. But yet the Supreme Court has followed in the last 10, 15 years the principle that the Supreme Court sets down some guidelines which are followed like a law till an actual law is framed by parliament. For example, harassment in workplace. There is no law as yet. So if generally a woman is harassed in an office, the Supreme Court has laid down guidelines that every office, government, private, whatever, must have a committee in which some complaint can be made, the complaint will be examined, and action will be taken. So this procedure has been set down till parliament gets about to make a law on the principle. And so it's like in the interregnum, you have some standards and they are working. Yeah. So if you go to court, last three years, pick out all the key things that these are attacks on medical establishments and doctors by people in anger who feel that they have spent two lives and it's still happening. Yeah. A doctor will not be able to carry on best medical practices. He will work very safely. You will not take the required risk, which is required to take. And it is the, ultimately the patients will suffer. So let the Supreme Court step in. It will call the central government. Ask the government, so what are you doing for a national law? Think about it. And till you do something, we can set the procedures. Now this probably would be an answer to some of your five questions. Which you Thank you for this advice, sir. But still, um, at least uh, out of all the states, at least 13 to 70 states already have hospital protection. But of course, there is variations in their penalty uh, and uh, uh, procedure and all. Uh, as I understand, if uh, four or six states <coughs> want, this is of course a state subject, but four or six states have a legislation, then it is easy for the central government to come out with an act in the parliament, uh, which will be much more uniform and more standardized. So you can use this as an argument in the case that if the states have separate, separate laws, the center can look at the body and assimilate the best features. So the best answer is, in this matter, is to go to the Supreme Court. That's right. No. Second thing we come back to is PCP and DT Act. PCP and DT Act, again. I'm sure you remember that during the working committee, we did deliberate on that. IMA as such does not support doctors who abet uh, female pesticides by determining the sex. We are against that. And we have a forum to save the female child. A forum is there which is very active. And uh, that social uh, circles, we are uh, doing that. But then, our problem is uh, the same law or act Applied on uh, even non compliance, like say, if you are not wearing, it's not a joke, <laughs> even if you don't wear a school, doctor's school, then uh, the same act is a criminal act. If you don't display your registration or if you don't have a copy of the act on the table, 
and there is a form which itself has to be simplified. A radiologist is so busy a person. We have only 14,000 radiologists in our country and some sonologists. And the workload is, even the machines are much more lax also. Lots of machines are there. So you cannot justify expect a radiologist to fill four pages when he does a ultrasound examination. It's not the reporting. A part of the reporting this form has to be. And if there is a one or two is left behind, then this again attract the same criminal law. So this is what that is. There are many other uh, areas where it, it things has to be addressed. But at least this if the government is doing by an amendment, uh, our comfort level will be better. Because already in Pune, seven doctors uh, a verdict has come against the uh, cocktail and they are put in jail and of course the high court has to be then and stay for Similar things are happening even in uh, Chandigarh and Haitian and other places. So this is real an issue for the so radiologist may as well do some uh, interpretation CT scan or MRI scan or interventional radiologist and leave this. But then ultrasound is uh, as it is the most cheapest, most commonly used, most user friendly and use a lot of diagnostic uh, uh, thing. Now, it's not uh, uh, used for uh, um, uh, this uh, obstacle case alone. Right from the emergency department, if a trauma case comes, immediately to know whether a life-saving procedure, like uh, putting a tube in the chest, as it put, or an uh, abdomen has to be opened for uh, organ damage or things like that. It's fast it is for. So, such a commonly used thing. If such a restriction comes, then uh, its utility and even buying of this equipment by hospitals, uh, yeah, it will be counterproductive for public health. The name of saving a few girls, which obviously uh, we don't say that it's not, it's not important, but at the same time, uh, this aspect will put off radiologists from uh, handling ultrasound machines. So it, it, it is, in effect, will be detrimental to public health. And this is one thing which is very sensible and uh, uh, you don't need a legal person to say that uh, this amendment has to be there. But even that, in the last 10 months, it has not been. But you can, you can spell out the amendment for a moment. Let me have given. Yeah. We have given the existing act, the amendment we are written and given to the government. So you see, because a huge number of people use an ultrasound machine or an echocardiography machine for only cardiac for stuff which has got nothing to do with the pelvis. So, why include, so the two parts of the argument are that if you have a limited resource to check on whether, uh, to, uh, to monitor this act, and you are actually painting everybody with the same brush, then you are diluting your ability to monitor the right areas because of the fact that your, your resources are, have to be limited. So the point is it becomes like an exercise just to sign a form I think that if we were to actually decipher which are the people who should be out of the ambit of, of this law because they don't, their machines, they can make a self-declaration that uh, my machines are not capable of doing fetal this and fetal that determination. And if and a, and a random audit to be done, if they are lying, then of course they, uh, there's no issues. But at the same time, the ones who are actually doing the obstetrician, the gynecologists and the ultrasound people who are doing uh, maternity work, they should be monitored and they should be the ones who should be careful about what they do and they don't do at, uh, with no, all the rigors. Before, before doctor, we, means, uh, we are putting the case in two compartments. One, that if somebody is using a machine or a heart or something else, right. that can never be within the ambit of this fetal stuff. So one, that should be separated. Right. It should go out. And secondly, as he says, that those who actually do uh, this uh, ultrasound, which means capable of finding out the sex and all that, then uh, these petty things of wearing a coat or not That wearing should be done, absolutely. That should, that should be two sides. Uh, right, right. Of, 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 of absolutely. Now, how do we handle this situation? No, but we have written M no, phone number of no, no, presentations. No, 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 he says you are right. <laughs> There's a point in what you are saying. But then it stops in that. See, PCP Entity Act it's is not now, there is a huge lobby of activists 
Okay. In, in, in the supervisory body, you will have only 10% doctors, 90% doctors. So the government is also, so, so we need a, it has to be a legal intervention. I'm not talking about Supreme Court because there are so many points. The, 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 the government, the health ministry, the law ministry, and medical associations, we need to sit together and find out what is wrong and what is not wrong. Health ministry alone will not be able to do it because there are a lot of legal points involved into it. It has to be sorted out, otherwise what is happening? Say, I'll give you an example myself. I have stopped, I have a small ultrasound machine, echo machine, small echo machine, which I used to take it to people's home to do urgent chest pain, rule out heart, heart attack, rule out examination. Now I cannot use it because by law it is prohibited, you cannot ship the machine from one place to another. And I have nothing to do with pregnancy. In heart attack, we have nothing. So I cannot, that machine is lying idle for the last three months, three years. No, no, we used to use it in camps for three camps. That's why all, 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 all camps have finished. We can't take it all out. You cannot all take camps, it out. All camps, this, this camp, this perfect health mela, I'm supposed to do a free echocardiography, I can't do. And if somebody does a study on that conviction which has happened for PNG doctors, 97% of the doctors who have not done just for a clerical mistake have been convicted. So that's a kind of a, 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 a stringent law which is unnecessarily been put on doctors, not exactly for a particular use. And this is what is happening. Now two ads are appearing in TV. Up to Sudhar Jao. That's one ad which is appearing on PCP and DT. That's the ad government is giving. Another ad has come in Gujarat. Print ad. That they are saying, kind like, like what is happening. They, they, what they are saying is, go and sting the doctor's operations. And if you sting and successfully catch a doctor doing PCP and DT violation, we'll give you 50,000, 20,000, 75,000. I mean, that's that's how you're treating the medical profession. That deserves the medical association. We, we need some intervention here because alone health ministry will not answer. Alone WCT ministry will not answer. We need an interaction where, I mean, we need your good self to intervene. The law ministry, there has to be a committee who looks after PCP and DT and Clinical Establishment Act. Somebody needs to sit and discuss. Otherwise, what is happening is, now all our doctors are forcing us today that on 16th of November, that one lakh doctors will go on the road, protest, not uh, strike, protest, give a memorandum to everybody. 50,000 doctors have already signed. I don't think so. That's what medical profession is made of for. That's, that's not the association is made of for. Even the PCP and DT Act, uh, in spite of that, it is there for 15 years, the sex ratio has, has not changed, particularly in the vulnerable states. And uh, I am saying that this is a social problem, mainly a social problem. Of course, uh, a one solution could be medical, but then the other solutions are not addressed. How to take care of uh, the society, we don't want to take care of it. Mainly because of financial things. Why don't the government support education, marriage of the children? Why don't uh, have a system whereby some fixed deposit is put to fit the girl child? Something like that. And empowerment, of course, uh, the, uh, the local body elections, uh, their percentage uh, has gone up. So such interventions, giving respectability to the women, also has to be cemented in the address. Which is not address. No, not our concern, but then, uh, as a citizen, we also have to say that uh, these things have to be addressed. Dr. Pillay, I think let us make maximum use of uh, yes, of uh, See, I would say guiding us on the legal issues. This aspect also is important. Yes, uh, 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 <laughs> I mean, I can try still I'm concerned. These two, we need, and these two. The third is Consumer Protection Act. That really is disturbing the health profession because nowadays we are getting uh, 10 crores is, is, is uh, like 72, 77 crore what the compensation asks for in one of the cases. Okay, now 10 crores is a routine. One crore is like everybody, everybody today. Now we have today. Somebody can file in Consumer Protection Act, in Medical Council, Criminal Act, and then these are laws, PCPMD Act violation. In every 
they are so very long applicable all the time we are worried and if the company if there is going not going to be a capping in compensation i don't think so the scenario of practice will change people will a lot of doctors will not uh, choose this as a profession if the capping is going if the if the compensation is going to be crores because we are not charging the money the way us charges but if the compensation is going to be decided by the us charges things are going to change don't but excuse me hasn't us cap स्टरलाइजेशन डेथ that if anybody does a sterilization there is a capping of 2 lakhs for every sterilization failure there is a capping by 30000 so in any government program they put a capping so whenever they do a government program say in a cataract surgery there is a capping so when government is doing a camp and if there is a mishap they put down a capping but for a private sector there is no capping that's our issue and 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 i don't think so i our purpose is to see medical profession is working we don't allow our gps so all our gps have been saying kindly give us a verdict that none of us will charge less than 1000 rupees as fees we have never allowed that all the gps approach us to the association that you make our fees minimum as 1000 i said that's not possible most of our gps are charging 100 rupees with that 100 rupees you cannot even think upon a one crore compensation being given sometimes and even insurance companies even today even i am not uh, in the middle insured for one crore in spite of uh, escalates of cost of living medical profession is one where the fees has not been personal charge has not been increased it still remains very very low 50 rupees upwards even less than that and at least when you have your consultation 10% we are seeing figures those who cannot afford they, they say they can only okay so Nareesh, you are also aware of one yeah. hospital 10 crore compensation being asked for So so the problem is sir when the when these high compensation has gone unchallenged now uh, they, they are claiming for even trivial things uh, they are now going to the level of the state commission not at the district form level uh, they have started uh, huge claims but that uh, the uh, court the kajo court is going to give it or not is a different thing but they started uh, claiming big amounts and the Uh, the complaints are much more than it used to be, say, two or three years ago. And uh, uh, as we understand, 90 percent of these cases, uh, uh, the doctor has been left alone. No, so no, that means not 90 so percent, much, much higher. Much higher. Much higher. Much higher. And uh, that means the frivolous complaints it is increasing. So See, what, what, we had, now what we had suggested, yeah. what we had suggested was to have a pre-screening. Every country has that. That there is a body which pre-screens prima facie whether there is it should go to uh, further for even hearing or not hearing. And that's and the basic thing is I'll tell you. There are several reasons why this happens. One of course is the fact that the grief of a family they want to put the blame on something and. not being able to understand the easiest thing is to go to consumer court or file a case in the police case uh, it, some criminal act has been done that's the easiest thing to do the second so so if we were to have a panel which says i've looked at it this was an expected outcome of this particular situation you may be getting pain from a scar but it's normal to get pain from a scar there's no reason to sue then a lot of the families would also be be able to settle the issue in their head that this is not negligence okay so that's an easy thing to do to take every court has a panel of experts including lawyers and including social uh, uh, activists to say okay is there really reason for to go forward or not and It's and i need to filter yeah filter but then the supreme court itself mm-hmm. has given contrary to what is one judgment was that uh, there should be a clinic because doctors should not be allowed and uh, a expert committee has to screen it then subsequently another judgment has come where they say even experts are not required uh, to decide on compensation not only that you don't have to have a screening 
you right. don't need to write it. To get the bus. We are actually at the no moment, effort. no need for a prescription. At the moment, we are talking about scheduled drugs, which government now is forcing. Forcing, because modifications are coming. UP has come as an ordinance that these drugs can be prescribed by Ayurvedic and homeopathic doctors. If that happens, more and more patients will die. A and B, Ayurved will stop practicing Ayurved, they will forget because these two sciences are absolutely different. So Ayurvedic drugs, except for scheduled E1, Ayurvedic scheduled drugs are E1, all other Ayurvedic drugs are OTC drugs. In medical, H, H1 and X are poisonous drugs and government is emphasizing to be that they can be prescribed by uh, non allopathic doctors. This is a serious concern, A, to our profession, B, it is something like you are allowing chartered accountants to practice the legal system, and, 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 and B is that it is going to be injurious to public. So whose protection is that of our objection? In whose interest? Or public, or public, or public, interest. public interest. So public protection, when you're saying that you have given your inputs into the appropriate fora where this is being discussed, it is, I, you know, this has been ad nauseum about the three-year course and to make physicians and stuff like that. No, no, you can't be talking about that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there are many fora like this, and ultimately the government in its own wisdom will take a decision. Are you worried or are we worried about many doctors practicing our profession without the license? Or are we really worried about the public? So the government, when you flag it in a public forum that these are dangerous things to do, then the consequences will be borne by the government, not by us. No, we are being in trouble. See, what I mean, you the thing is, if you look at states where modern medical doctors are practicing modern medicine and where the other system doctors are not allowed to practice modern medicine. The health parameters are much, much better. Say, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, or Karnataka is another place. Here, uh, this is not. But as you come more towards the north, uh, this is there. And to that extent, the health parameters are not uh, to the extent it should be. So definitely, you can say that these sort of trends are called a product, allowing other systems. And time and again, many of the high courts have come out with verdicts that definitely say, categorically say, that modern medical drug can only be prescribed by modern medical doctors as per medical forces of action from such and such. Even uh, the Haryana, Punjab, and many other. So the medical council of India should be fighting that, no? They can't do it because Why? the different councils are involved. For example, yeah, even if other councils, the Medical Council of India is supreme as far as how the modern medical practice is to be. And uh, it cannot be challenged. But that's why in, in many of the courts, uh, the verdicts are in favor that only modern medical doctors can practice. But then, in spite of that, the government, for their own reasons, are uh, allowing other systems to practice modern medicine. And there is no need for that. The thing is, what they say is that modern medical doctors are less. But then, a uh, problem which has been there so is since independence. And where uh, you have not applied but your mind you know, to solve I, I, I would come back to what I would come back to the you cannot, you cannot have a quick remedy by allowing other systems to practice modern medicine. So that is not the solution. You know, you know, I think that if we take on domains which don't belong to us, we will be diluting our effectiveness completely. No, this is so this is the domain of the Medical Council of India, let Medical Council no, of India find it. Medical Council it. of India has nothing to do with it. Medical Council of India now and then has written very clearly to the Health Ministry right. that we cannot register. You know, what is happening is there is a judgment called Mukti Arjan judgment, which came from the Supreme Court. They said Ayurvedic doctors cannot write modern medicine unless they get registered with the State Medical Registry under the Indian Medical Council. Okay. Now what happened with that is all the Ayush ministry sent a proposal that and the ministry, the joint secretary of the ministry of health sent a letter to all the states, kindly amend your medical state medical council act so that now you can register Ayurvedic doctors under your council. Okay. And then this happened in Maharashtra. So Maharashtra, they, they allowed Ayurvedic doctors to practice and asked Maharashtra medical council to 
register Maharashtra Medical Council. There is nothing to it. We cannot register them. So now UP in UP they have come out with an ordinance. They said if the council is not registering them, we will come out with an ordinance. We will make them practice. So what is happening is today, in every state they want Ayurvedic doctors to practice allopathy, which is not going to be in the interest of the society. Absolutely. I'll give you an example. If an MI patient comes to you and if it's being managed by an Ayurvedic doctor for four hours, then he sends to us, he's going to be complicated. Now a complicated case is coming to us. Nah? The, 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 if it's coming at four or five hours, and then the whole legal liability comes on us. No, the point, the point being it doesn't happen. I think it is happening. I don't know. I, I think that I don't know how to fight this battle. Because you're saying different states are going in different directions. I was about to say that. Yeah, why? Well, how do you understand what you there are only some things which are union government and some things best should be in the state. Union government cannot do anything for the power best in the state. First of all, it's not as if the union government can pass a suit about anything. It's a federal system. Somewhere the states are supreme, somewhere the union is supreme. Generally union, but there are many portions of the state is supreme. So if the state is doing this, the union has no power. Especially health. Health is a state subject. That's what I want to do. Health is a state subject. Union is nobody. So a state will say, Chhattisgarh, I have tribal areas. No doctor is willing to go to a tribal area. Okay? So I will empower the uh, Ayurvedic doctor. Maybe as an allopathic doctor. At least he's half a doctor. It is better to have half a doctor than to have a rich doctor. And he will go there and he will do it. It's not only your concern. It's the state who decides. Now, if you are still agreed by this decision, you must challenge it in a court. This yeah, cannot be done. This uh, cannot be done. Challenge it in the Supreme Court if you want. You yeah, see, that's, that's exactly the it. point. But you can't expect the union to take away, uh, take away, or, you know. No, no, that part, uh, uh, challenge we it. do agree and we know that uh, the role of the union government is this. Yeah, yeah. We know that. But then, uh, among the issues, uh, this... Uh, That's what I'm saying. So now, see, UP and Center are in any case at all. UP, Maharashtra, and Center. But what I'm saying, no, every state has its own peculiarities. I've given you an example of a tribal area. Maybe a case of JNK. The rural area, the doctors are not available. It's better to have somebody who will give you something than to have nothing. Right. So I okay, so think okay, okay. don't go I'm that way. Sure. Don't sure. go that route because you will dilute your two and major and issues that we have. Under Schedule K, under Schedule K in Drug and Cosmetic Act, uh, government has powers. Uh, government has powers to allow certain anybody to prescribe certain drug under the government setup. But they can't come out with a rule for the private sector. But they have now. What are you going to do? You, you fight it in the state. The right. state is giving the order, it's not the center. Let's move that topic. Because you, that's, uh, yeah, because okay. that's exactly what I'm saying. So why why get di why di don't divert your attention uh, to from the core issue? Uh, if you want, I'll yes, tell something. Another way out is, wherever it has happened, you file cases in those languages. File a petition in the Supreme Court for transfer. It's called a transfer petition. Tell the Supreme Court to transfer all these cases to and itself uh, and decide it once and for all for the whole country. Rather than going to every high court and then going in appeal, you have a right to file and have it club in Supreme Court. Supreme Court. Just to file in Supreme Court. That's a good point. I can advise you. Whoever yeah. you no, are. No, no, excellent point. How to tackle this problem? Separately from that group that we are talking about, between right. law ministry and health ministry. Who is here? Something. Who is here? Something. Who is here? Usko pure issues rakho jo do teen hamare top of the mind concern. Yeah. You can please understand. You yourself are saying for one year you have been going everywhere, nothing has happened. Let us restrict that to one or two issues. The one which you can fight, I can devise methods for you to challenge it, take it to Supreme Court. I say that you decide it once and for all. It is delicious for the world. Right, right. These two issues uh, rapidly will go by your advice. The author and the uh, I will give you lawyers yeah. who will guide you in this fashion. And the five years and three high courts can be straight to Supreme Court. Yeah, what is the wonderful thing? So you don't have to go and fight it. Whatever. Wonderful. So, I just. Uh, can there be a solution to a situation where 
in a specific case of uh, say uh, uh, so called alleged negligence a uh, particular persons or group of persons they they uh, put applications and they try you in all possible uh, places Forum. starting all forum consumer forum police complaints then uh, court then going to all those possible medical councils and the administration local administration and then they go to the state administration also and simultaneously from all over instead of you know one redresser at one place from all over the you know uh, 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 we are asked to reply or inquiries are been had like uh, so that puts a particular establishment or a particular doctor in lot of pain and lot of distress this distracts you from your work this age uh, this could be a part of the whole yes yeah. solution yes Similar thing against uh, multiple administrations, where I need so many clearances, 80 laws are applicable on me, and I have to move from every 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 place to another. There is no central system where I can apply, and they help me in coordinating all the regulations. PCPNT, Clinical Establishment Act, then Weight and Measures Act for my <laughs> Spirit Act has now come, and I'm using a spirit for washing for taking out the blood. The Spirit Act is applicable on me. Now the, the Water Act has come. Water Act has come, which is applicable on me. Up till now, there was an act for a uh, uh, pollution was only for a biomedical waste. Now the Water Act, you are aware of that judgment. The Water Act 35 section is a you need a clearance in the Water Act. So, I mean, all the time, every every day, see my smaller medical establishment doctor who is running a nursing home, five bedded nursing home at home. Now today, now what has happened is now insurance company says we need minimum tenders. So they they also want five bedded hospitals to go away, they vanish away. So in a small nursing home, if you need so many clearances, every day if I ask a doctor, he says every day, uh, every week I have one person coming and I have to shut down two to three thousand rupees so that he keeps away uh, and postpone his visits to my place to inspect. So why can't there be? A, I mean, can it also be? This is a problem with any businessman in this country. That you run a shop or a restaurant, you got 25 registrations. The government is working on it. It's kind of thing to open this now. Open the funds which are very, very, very difficult and which are affecting you day by day. Yeah. And you have to be the system. No, no, you're absolutely right. I just want to think. Let's not dilute it. Two or three yeah. issues for a discussion. One or two issues for folks. I think that, that is the absolute. Solution. Say that you catch the attention. I'm not telling you. You have to give also offer something. You can't all the issues you have raised. Give a feeling to me that by and large you doctors are okay. You are doing well. You want to do better. You don't want this. You don't want that. Then we carry on better and better. Give something back. Exactly. Tell that we will do this one day free clinic, one day this, one day that. Maybe it will. Some sympathy with the credibility with the public also. That is definitely happening. Not any one person. Not camps. No, not camps. Every no, doctor right. in whichever yeah. forum is he in. Yeah. I mean, whichever compartment. But look, we are not uh, publicizing. As a publicizing. Uh, as a doctor, no, 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 what uh, definitely ten days. At least five to ten patients we are seeing. But doctor, that's who knows? Who knows? Yeah, that's that, that is what, the what, what, what even, no, even, no. even as an hospital. Yeah, even if you don't go on, you are forced to do some concessions because they are economic. No, 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 so no, even no. that way, per year, the amount uh, that we are using the bill. Yeah, 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 do a collective declaration, not an individual declaration. Let I am a declare and get endorsement from its members. That to say, as I've been saying earlier, we need to improve the image which we have lost. We have lost the moral ground. We must regain it. And what are the measures you can? You are all wise men. To come, these are the things that we can do to actually regain the confidence of the public. And by, if you regain the confidence of the public, everybody will listen to us. Some smaller issues, which may not be related to our major problems. One of them is that 
Very great circular, there is a human organ transplant exchange where the government said that in order to get a, a, a organ, they are given a hierarchy. The Indian first, then PIO, then NRI, and the last is partners. Then a circular came in Delhi, uh, the Delhi government, LG, at that time, he issued a circular that if the foreigner comes and he needs the corneal transplant, uh, you have to go through this procedure, this procedure, and you cannot do it. Now, similarly, in surrogacy, uh, the act is now, the discussion is going on, and one of the PIL is that uh, an embryo who is frozen embryo, which is being imported from the country, other country, is a human life. And because a human life, therefore, that, uh, that the import is a uh, violation of Human Trafficking Act, that's one. And secondly, the child has a human right, therefore you cannot. If that's so, then all abortions should be murdered. Because medically the life is up to 20 weeks. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, but this ART Act now, you know, it's order, maybe in Delhi, but not in our state. At least in Kerala, these sort of people, no, 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 Systems also have a system of self-correction. If 
seeking another case starts in Delhi. The high, up to the High Court, it will be said that these children will bind you. But when it will come to the Supreme Court, if you have a good lawyer and he can explain that these are the errors in this judgment and it should not be the law of the land, the Supreme Court has a right to correct its judgment and say that this was wrong, it will not reopen Dr. Dyer's treaty. That is closed forever. But the effect of the judgment can be taken in reverse, can be taken in the future. This is what has to be done. If the new case starts, this is the one thing. So it is a self-correction. It takes some time. It will take some time. Now, what I'll do is, uh, I'm going to end. So, you want to ask anything? No. Done. Thank you. I think we've had enough. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we have covered as most uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. final comments. No, I, you know, I definitely feel that what a valuable suggestions uh, Mr. Rothke has given. But I also couldn't agree, and I was arguing before we came also, that look, the first priority we should do, and IMA as an organization, which has the last, largest membership, is to come up with one image improvement of our own profession. And also develop mechanisms of preventing people from crossing the line of doing wrong things. So where is the shame in us being actually custodians of our own ethics? Why don't we devise, why don't we do, at least if you remind everybody that look, you take this oath again, renew your oath today that of ethics, that you will not do the following things or you will do the following things. Like the Hippocratic Oath, I'm told there's an MCIO oath. And I asked hundreds of people, I've asked doctors, have you seen the MCIO? They said, we never took it. We don't know where it is. We don't know where it is. So even if they did take it and they've forgotten, it's time to remind everybody. Why don't we do things like this? These are good things to, for public to know that the doctors are also worried that some of us, uh, maybe 10% of our profession has gone on the wrong direction that we are all worried and we want to bring them back into the fold and walk the straight line. This is definitely we are doing. This year, we have a grievance redressal cell and a HS committee at the center. And we are, uh, 12 months at least, 10 or 15 cases comes to, to us for disposal. So that's what we are doing. On ethics, uh, for the first time, in the bioethics chair, uh, we have a program. We already have a lot of programs. We have the health universities. We are giving training to trainers, that is medical teachers to upgrade the knowledge of ethics. And even on the 7th, we are signing an agreement with the bioethics you know, chair to take this process further. Every state we have formed an ethics chair. And we are going in a big way to you know, implement this. this and we also have, I think Kerala, a patient care fund. Doctors and doctors contribute money to that, to that fund. And this fund is utilized for Looking after the needy patients. Wow, so we may not be doing big moments, but uh, process we have to So, all these areas we are addressing. It's not that uh, we are not aware or we are not uh, 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 cognizant of these things, but we are doing it. Uh, yes, there are 10 to 15 percent lawyers who reduce the level of the education. You reach out to them. A lot of people, they will become stockholders.
thanks all our faculty, especially uh, Mukul Rohatgi to have joined us in this program and Dr. Trehan who has come all the way. I mean, uh, he was in the midst of surgery and he said I have to fulfill my commitment and come and he left everything and come. We are very grateful to uh, both of you and to my national president who has all the way come from Trivandrum only for this program. He, he landed here, started the program and now he is catching the flight back to Trivandrum. Oh, with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you for this interaction. And all those who are listening, uh, uh, that's the end of the day today. If you have any questions, kindly pass it on. We will get you the answer back. And this video will be in our emedinaccess.com. The link will also go through daily IMA news to all of you. And you can watch it repeatedly, and it will help us a lot in solving all our problems. Uh, that's all for today. We'll come back with one more issue later. Uh, thank you very much and thank you all our faculty.